My name is David DeVere, and I am a motion control robot operator, among other things. And specifically, I operate the Mark Roberts Bolt and the Milo. I've been on many shows and a whole heck of a lot of commercials, and I would say I'm fairly experienced at programming these robots. Here are just a few samples of the kind of work I do. Regardless of what type of cinema robot it is, the software is pretty similar. You have to move the camera around, program waypoints, and then execute that combination of waypoints in a move. And moving the robot is the challenging part. So when you're talking to a director, it can be very confusing exactly what they want you to do. To fix that, I created this, which is just a little wooden box that I would hand a director and tell them to point at what they want me to shoot. And surprisingly, this helped streamline communication substantially. And after having this with me, I was able to really understand the two most, most important things about programming, which is where do they want the camera and where, what do they want it pointing at. I've always wished that programming could be equally as simple and intuitive. Unfortunately, it's not. And so after enough time of hoping and waiting for a better solution, I decided to take things into my own hands. That was not on purpose. Introducing Power Gloves, the fastest and most intuitive way of programming and controlling cinema robots ever. Plus, holy shit, these are fun. What exactly is going on here? Well, let me tell you. Uh, using accelerometers and software, I'm able to measure exactly where my fingers and hands are in space. Using software, then I am able to send mouse macros and keyboard shortcuts over to Flare. I've actually not hacked Flare in any way. I've simply created an interface with which to communicate it. And these gloves can do all sorts of things, control almost the entirety of the options. And because the gestures can be compounded, there's almost no limit to what I can do. Starting with some really basic things, I can put my hands together and swipe towards my body to send the robot home, and I can swipe away after putting my hands together to send the robot to its last position. That's a really, really basic thing, but super handy and easy to do quickly with these gloves. But those are just basic commands. They're not actual live action movements. Those are, that's me telling the robot to go and do something, go home or go to its last position. If I want to actually control the robot live, I'll need to connect my thumb and one of my fingers on my right hand. Then moving my left hand in space relays a position for the robot. Without fingers on my right hand touching, nothing will happen. That's a bit of a safety feature there. In order to keep things intuitive, the orientation of my hand doesn't actually matter unless I put all four fingers together, in which case now orientation makes a difference and I can change the angle of the robot. Strictly speaking, if I simply move my hand, the orientation of my hand doesn't make a difference and that makes it a lot more intuitive for me to push and pull the robot or the camera around. Another gesture, like putting these three fingers together, allows me to orbit the camera around an object and that's extremely useful in this line of work and honestly, really intuitive. And using the keypad on my arm, I'm also able to adjust the speed ratio of response of robot versus my actions. So I can make the robot move a lot more or a lot less. Also really useful. A clap and a twist activates the robot, something that otherwise cannot be done remotely. Once active, I can immediately go into controlling where in space the robot is using these gestures. After enough practice, the right hand gestures become really intuitive and the left hand gestures also, of course, become intuitive. The added advantage is I can switch between controlling the robot or just controlling the whole base and robot. And I can also alternate between just the base. That's really handy because sometimes in order to reach the next waypoint, the base may need to be in a different position ahead of time. All of these things really add together to make this movement and positioning of the robot so quick and easy and just so much fun. Using these things really makes you feel like Minority Report or 
not as cool movie, but Iron Man 3, when he sends the armor off. It is so fun. And I know the name Power Gloves is a pretty uh, silly name for them, but man, do you feel powerful when you move and the robot moves with you. Using these things is actually so much fun. A little scary, uh, but mostly exciting and so much fun. I'm gonna walk you guys through a sample of programming a whole move and then actually firing it off. So, we're gonna start with, we're gonna start with moving the robot back to our number one position. And I'm gonna just move it to the right a bit, line up this stormtrooper. And I'm actually gonna pull focus. There we go, I'm gonna tilt up, here we go. I'm gonna pull focus just like I would in real life with this little sort of fake knob gesture. Pulling back, setting the focus away. Once it's sharp, I'll save this as position one. And from here, uh, let's move in. All right, move the whole robot. Slow it down and go up a bit. All right, focus. Perfect. Position two. All right, from here we're gonna move around. This is just a random move that I'm trying to create here. We're gonna keep moving around. Maybe we'll go a little higher. All right. Uh, okay, out. Little mistake there, but no harm, no foul. Let's put that as position three. And let's lower this thing, come around again. Maybe we'll start near the feet. So we'll go, go back and a little lower. There we go, all right. Position four, and we'll just come up in order to get a final. This is just for fun, just to show you guys what it's like to actually go through this process. Come up, that'll, we'll call that our last position. All right, that's it. We'll go ahead and send this off. All right, so that's the example of actually programming a move with these gloves. It is, again, so much fun. And honestly, putting sensors on things is not limited to just gloves. I've already received some feedback that maybe that I should do something like a Harry Potter magic wand or other things. Any good ideas, leave them in the comments. I, I'll try and see if I can make some Power Glove 2.0 type <laughs> videos. Uh, honestly, there's so many more details I could go into about the gloves, especially how the software works. There's a lot of built-in delays for safety features, and also I'm only tracking certain amounts of per access as well so that I don't do multiple axes when I don't want to. All, all that kind of stuff, it's just overwhelming, and I don't want to make this video too complicated, but I really hope you appreciate the, uh, the demonstration and the Power Gloves versatility, obviously it's a very niche thing and it's not for a lot of markets. I don't think too much of the audience is gonna be motion control operators, but knowing that this type of technology is available and really anyone can do it is very exciting to me and I hope it's also exciting to you. If there are any broad stroke questions, again, leave them in the comments. I will try and do my best to get back to everybody. I think this is generally a one-off kind of video, but if you guys do wanna see more content like this, Comment, like, subscribe, let me know, and I might try and do more. I don't have a lot of time, but uh, this was fun to make. Uh, it's obviously fun to use. Uh, so hopefully if there's a market for it, I I'll do more stuff like this. All right, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you on the next one.